Um, so let's just say that for this multifamily property for let's see what happens. Cute. Um, MLS number, no, I just need to find the MLS number. Um, okay, so uh, enter in the address. So change MLS number to property address and then type in 4763 uh, 34th Street. Happy to be here. Um, yes, I joined Keller Williams in the early part of the year 2000, so I've been around for a minute. And I came on board from uh, just a little over a year in the business as an agent from Remax. And I'd had a very successful first year in business. I came on board to the second office launched in the Southeast region. And again, as an agent, and I tell people I was there about five minutes and Brian Fair knocked on my door and invited me to be a team leader. Um, and after a little research, I took on that opportunity, which really was a life-changing event for me to become a team leader in this amazing company and everything that it's led to in between. I've been a general manager. I launched an office and was an OP in the Carolinas region for a couple of years. And then I've had this most awesome uh, opportunity to be the regional director of, as we like to say, the award-winning Southeast <laughs> region, which includes Georgia, Alabama, and Tennessee. And uh, I've done this since the end of 2008. So it's been, again, just a wonderful experience for me, working side by side with Bob Kalinske, who is a brilliant businessman, and Kay Evans, who is one of my mentors and the culture queen of our world here in the Southeast region. So that's sort of how I got to where I am today. All right, so you were RD back in the 2008, 9, 10, wonderful real estate market. Yeah, I came into the RD role and rode that wave right to the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> but we came out of it, I mean, we lived through it and we learned and some great lessons and we experienced a little bit of the good, the bad and the ugly of those times, but we came out of it and we're stronger and better for it now. And our people that were with us during those times really, uh, while this is a different shift and the environments are different now, it's still uh, a tough time and we just have to be willing to go through it a day at the time. Well, and that's the secret, isn't it? A day at a time. Yeah, absolutely. So as this all hit, what's it, what's it been like in your area? Because I know uh, we can all think, well, every place must be experiencing this like California, and it's not. So what, what is your reality for you, your agents, the market centers? Well, I think our reality is that we realized, I guess, uh, three and a half, four weeks ago that we really were going to have to shelter in place in all three of the states that we're affiliated yeah. with and, and that we turned on really, is updating, but you can't oh, play school. Let me mute. Yes. We, really, we really, No, Baba. No, but you can. Okay, I'll talk now. <laughs> We really were going to have to uh, stop and look at the situation and follow the guidelines that have been established for us by our local county, city, state, country, for that matter, whatever, uh, and follow those guidelines. And so we, from the regional standpoint, took a stance and said, we're going to go home and work from home. Even though in our regional office, it's a very small office, there are only, there are only uh, four people that actually worked from that location. Um, we just knew we had to follow the same guidelines and, and live the life that everyone else was living. And 
Um, because of that, we've learned to communicate uh, via Zoom, via phone, via email, via text message, via any way we can, and, and to make it work. And it's really all about making it work, however it works. I do a morning staff call with our staff members, and then we round back up again every day at the end of the day to make sure everybody feels good and you know we learn what their wins are and how they were successful during the day and then i encourage our staff our regional staff to go back and enjoy some family time because you know working from a home-based office and being able to separate that business part of it from your family part is a real trick and i think when people learn that trick it makes a difference in how they behave during their work day. And that's what I'm just trying to help them understand. So, so what does that look like? What, what's the trick, do you think? Well, I, it's, it's a choice you make. And, and really, I think we have to make a choice to, for me uh, to get up and come to work every day. And that means I'm not really at home. I'm at work, even though it's in my home. Um, um, I get up and get dressed and come to work every day. I know a lot of people, you know, work in their PJs or in their sweatpants or whatever, and I am making no judgment on anybody that chooses you to mean do you, that. You don't sleep in pearls? I thought that was your pajamas. <laughs> this is gold today, golden diamonds today. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, however, I do believe for me and my mindset, and I think everything is about the seven inches between our ears, uh, being able to get up and make a distinction between, okay, this is not the weekend. I'm not going to lounge around in my sweats. I'm going to get up just like I normally would do, put on my makeup, fix my hair, uh, and come to work. I'm just not driving four miles to the office. I'm just coming upstairs to come to work. And I've talked about that with our staff because I think when they can make that distinction, it makes life easier for them. We have a very young uh, regional assistant and she has children at home. And she's really worked hard to make a separation, although I know that can't happen all day. I don't have children at home. It's real different if you're a parent with kids at home. And, I, I know that's got to be a, a difficult opportunity for each of them, but you just make the choice to make it work. Yeah. Um, so has your work day uh, outside of lack of commute changed much? And if so, how? You know, I think that what I realized early in this process was that communicating more would be ultimately my greatest uh, success. And not that I'm such a great communicator, but making sure that our people know what's going on. Um, and and when, when I'm talking about our, our people, I mean our leadership team, our OPs, our team leaders, our MCAs, uh, making sure our agents know what's going on. We're a big region. We have 60 market centers. We have 13,553 agents. There's, there's a lot going on in this region. And so over communicating now more than any other time has been a choice I've made. And so I've probably been working a lot longer hours than I normally would work because we had such a, a great system set up at our regional office and how we worked and interacted there uh, was very different than the way we're interacting now. And it just, it was a well-oiled machine and it's taken us a few weeks to make this feel like a well-oiled machine. And yet I think we're doing it pretty well. But over-communicating has been the biggest change for us and making sure that we're delivering uh, quality information, not just information for the sake of information, but quality information uh, for our associates so they can continue to do their business and for our leaders so they can run their market centers in an effective, profitable way. Well, and I think what you're doing by doing that <clears throat> is also role modeling for the rest of us what we should be doing 
all the way to the agent level, um, I believe they should be over communicating with their databases because we are getting great access to information from so many different levels of our organization. And met, most people outside of a company like KW aren't getting that access. So what a great way to serve, you know, the other business owners in the community or, or just people in your database. Yeah, you know, it's so true, Ashley. We have been provided with a foundation of learning from day one with Keller Williams. Since the day I started, it's always been such a learning-based company. And that was part of the attraction for me to KW. And I've not seen that slow down at all in, since I joined this company. And I think the very fact that Gary, as a visionary for us, uh, realized not that we were gonna experience the coronavirus, but that technology was the wave we needed to catch five years ago. And so he began that for us then, long before any of us had a clue about, it. I'll say this differently, long before most of us, and especially me, had a clue about how important it was gonna become for us. Not that I question his vision or any of his actions, because he's a brilliant businessman, and I admire him very much. I just think some of us don't think like he thinks at, at the level that he thinks. So we're so fortunate that we have the technology that we have today that makes it easy for us or easier for us uh, to be able to work remotely. I mean, good gracious, when I was a team leader in 2000, to think about transmitting from a home office or remotely, that would have been an impossible task. And yet, you know, all 60 of our market centers were able to transmit. Some of them went into their offices to do that, but some of them were able to do it remotely. How, how important is that for us? And we're very fortunate. While it's uncomfortable right now as we're kind of, you know, it feels choppy and disconnected sometimes as we're learning a new piece to do, but there's going to be so many good things that we carry over and after coronavirus that help us with efficiency. So there's, a, I've got some excitement around that. Um, and I, my, I see the heart behind you on your background. I know, I, I know it's a hologram, but uh, <laughs> the, you're an extrovert like I am. Um, how are you personally dealing with not being with your people? You know, that's been hard. I miss hugs. I'm, I'm a hugger. I grew up in the South. We hugged everybody. We'd go to the grocery store and hug people we didn't even know. So, yeah, you know, it, that part's been tricky. It's been interesting. Um, and I would tell you the biggest ache in my heart for me is not being able to see my grandchildren on a regular basis. Mm because we really saw them every weekend and, and they're little and, you know, um, they don't, I don't think they have a concept of time and we've always FaceTimed with them and we continue to do that. But really uh, being able to spend time with them, I've really, really missed that. And yet I know that that will come around again. And I, I've, what I've told myself is that there are other grandparents who don't live in Atlanta 20 minutes away from them, don't get to see them all the time anyway. So we just need to be grateful for the moments we do get to have with them. And I feel the same way about our people, you know, not seeing our people every day is, is tough. I think as you were saying that, it just hit me that as soon as we're all released and we can get back, um, to some semblance of normal, I think we're gonna see much more physical contact, even though it may not be the safest thing. I think we're all gonna be grabbing onto each other. I and think I it's think, gonna be a dichotomy. I think half the people are gonna go stay away and everybody else is gonna be anxious for the hugs. It'll be interesting. Uh, but I don't think we'll ever take it for granted again. I, I, for me, I, I can't even uh, fathom. I'll be so grateful just to get out there. Me too. Um, with with the, I'm going to say increased energy and time. I'm working more from home and there's a lot more energy that goes into doing these Zooms than just being on the phone or even physically uh, with people. Um, how, how are you taking care of your energy needs? What does that look like? What's your, your um, 
self-care look like right now? That's, that's, uh, that's been interesting too. Um, I have learned, I guess the first couple of days I came up to the office and I just stayed in here all day. And, you know, I realized that didn't make good sense because even at the office office, I don't do that. You know, I get up and walk around. And so um, I've learned to make myself get up. I usually go outside and sit, sit on the deck and have my lunch, which is really lovely. I mean, that's a nice break, right? Even if it's only 20 minutes, just to get up and go outside and get some fresh air. And then about every, uh, at least every hour, I stand up and walk around somewhere. Otherwise, I'll sit here all day like this at the computer. And that's, that's not healthy mentally or otherwise. But I have found that in the evenings when I shut the computer down and go downstairs, I am much more tired than I had been before. And, and I think that the, the emotional tiredness, even though I don't feel it like I'm emotionally drained, by the time the end of the day comes, I do think it becomes that. And so I just try and go to bed earlier every night. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing. I got to the end of the day last night and I had nothing left. I just yeah. nothing. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah. I've kept my routine. I go to bed at the same time every night and I still wake up at the same time every morning, <clears throat> but there's some energy seepage <laughs> that's going on uh, yeah. as we sit in front of these computers. I'm drinking more water too. And I've just found that's been, um, instead of drinking a cup of tea or something like that, I've tried to stay away from caffeine because that makes me jittery and then I get crazy and, I have conversations with people and, <laughs> and so I've just had these big bottles of water with me at all times. And that's helped a lot too, I think. Awesome. So, cheers. So what, um, if you were a team leader again and you had agents in an office, what would you be telling them right now to do um, in terms of, of their businesses? Because we, we in San Diego are being hit pretty hard. I don't know if it's the same there, but, um, our, our market has shifted immediately. And on top of all the things we just talked about, then you've got this layer of, well, what do we do? We may be sit, sitting here through the end of May. <laughs> so what's right. the most effective thing you think agents who are still in production who need to make a living should be doing? So that's, um, that's such a great question. And I think it's a, a thoughtful question for all of us to look at. And, and we have conversations around that every morning at our staff meeting. What is it we can do as a resource for our agents? Um, I have actually in our area, we have been very fortunate. We haven't seen a huge shift yet. In fact, some of our agents are doing more business now than they've done in a while, which has been interesting. But I think learning to do the basic practical things are the things agents need to do. And as such, we created a weekly um, session that we've made available for our associates and other agents in our region, even if they aren't Keller Williams agents, called Thrive with the Best of the Best. And we've got, uh, we, I interview two agents each week. It's a real short session because I think, you know, you could do something for a very long time, but I think the shorter you make it, the more focused people can become. And we'll have our top producing agents come on. We have a list of questions that we go through with them. And they are just giving really practical things that they're doing that are working in their business right now. Giving illustrations of um, virtual listing presentations through the flip book. And some of you may know what that is. Uh, how they're doing virtual showings. Um, what the conversations look like when they call their database, some of the things they may be sending out to their database, just basic practical tips that anybody, whether they're a top producer or a brand new agent can use in the business today. And we do that every Wednesday. In fact, it'll be shortly after we finish this today, we'll do our thrive with the best of the best. And um, we've seen that be helpful for people. 
if nothing else, to help keep them focused. And I think as a team leader or a regional director or an OP or any leader at any level, an ALC member, I think our jobs are to help our people stay focused on what they can do. And just because you aren't writing a contract or taking a listing today doesn't mean you can't be planning for your business for tomorrow. And whether tomorrow is 24 hours or 24 days or God forbid, 24 weeks, but who knows, do something, make a choice to do something in your business today that will help you fulfill your goals by the end of the year. What, what I've heard, one word I've heard you say over and over is choice, which I love uh, in, the, in the week and a half that we've been doing these. <clears throat> excuse me, I haven't heard anybody say that. And yet- I have a whole spiel about choice and I'd love to share that with you right now, if I may. Please, please, so empowering uh, to realize we have choices. I, well, and we do, and that's the whole thing because I, you know, often we hear people say, oh, I didn't have a choice. And I just cringe when I hear that because for a long time, and I don't know what day I woke up in my 68 years and realized that I get to make a choice every day, but sometime years and years ago, it dawned on me that what I do is based on what choice I make when I wake up every day. And so I've learned that making good choices is the best thing I can do every day. And yet sometimes I make really bad choices, not intentionally, but it just happens. And I learn from those and move on. But I think the choice that all of us can make today is to do something for someone else. And that's really been my mindset since I came up to my little upstairs office four weeks ago. And um, it doesn't have to be a big something. I think of the song called Pass It On that we sing in church. And um, I don't want to mess up the words. I think I know them for memory, but I'll read them to you because at least the first verse, it only takes a spark to get a fire going. And soon all those around can warm up with its glowing. That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, you'll spread the love to everyone you'll want to pass it on. So I make a choice every day to do something, even if it's teeny tiny something for other people. And I'm going to give you some examples because I think when we hear examples, it'll trigger something in some of you for things you can do. And some of these things you're probably already doing and some of them you may know about but haven't done. Um, The first thing I would say is that I've been coming up here for 30 days and I think about every day writing a handwritten note to one person. What would happen if every day everyone on this Zoom conference woke up and spent two minutes, it doesn't take long, and wrote one note to somebody you know, whether it's a family member, someone in your database, to Ashley Lund, to to whomever, to Mo Anderson, to anybody. You write a note to somebody and you do that, that is a little spark. And that's a little spark in your heart because it makes you feel good because you've done something And it becomes a spark for them the day they go out to their mailbox and retrieve that note from you. A couple other things that I think uh, have been helpful for me, uh, and that is, and this is, this requires you to have some financial resources, but not a lot of money, just a little money. And that is to, I have three adult children. And I was a stay-at-home mom, but my children got on the school bus and went to school every day. I cannot even fathom what these people that are, these parents that are staying at home with their children and trying to do their job and trying to do the job of the school teacher and raise their children are thinking today. I mean, I would be, it would be maddening to me. I'm not sure my children would have survived. I hope they would have, but at any (laughs) rate. Um, I, I find that if we can do something, make a choice to do some little something for some of those parents, it'll make a difference. For instance, 
um, send a meal to them. <clears throat> you know, you don't have to spend a lot of money to send a meal to someone. And that, again, puts a spark in your heart, but it also puts a spark in the receiving person's heart, the, the parents that are receiving that meal. And it sparks something in that restaurant or that company that you ordered the food from. And it's a spark for that delivery person that takes that food to them. So that's a bunch of sparks to get those fires going. And one thing Steve and I have done in the absence of being able to sit down with our granddaughter in our lap and read her a book is we've created some videos just going through some of the books that she loves at our house that we read to her and sending her that video. That's a spark for us, but it's also a spark for her, whether she remembers it years from now or not. It's also a spark for my son and his wife because it gives them a five minute break from the madness of raising children. Um, I've got a couple comments. I, I'm just going to share, if you don't mind, from the, the Zoom yeah, box here. Um, Mindy says, AM cards is amazing <clears throat> at making an authentic touch, and also her children would not have survived. Uh, <laughs> um, Kristen Mindy, says... Is that Mindy Grubb? No, uh, one, of, one of my Mindy's. <laughs> You're Mindy, okay. Yeah. And uh, Kristen says, I, had she been quarantined with her boys, she would have transferred them to another house. <laughs> um and that my my mindy again who's just an awesome sweetheart says what do you have some key tips on following your schedule and your time block during this time well i follow i am a calendared person if i have a calendar event on my calendar it is going to happen unless something crazy outside of that would take place so I share a calendar with my regional staff and my regional right hand, left hand, and most of my brain, Lisa Romine, who's our regional operations manager, helps me manage that calendar. So I just know that I'm going to start my day at eight o'clock. And I'm going to go through my calendar. I'm going to do everything I need to do on that calendar. And then at the end of the day, my computer is going to close down and I'm not going to open it back up. But that's how I manage my days. I think that that last piece I, I have found is key. And to have um, kind of a ritual before I leave my office, my home office space, so that I do turn it off. Because if I don't, it's going to seep in everywhere else. And I, that's where the exhaustion comes from. Yep. Yep. I think if we can close, close the office, when we close the office, home office, wherever you're officing from, if you can close that and stop and go down and be part of your family life, whatever your family looks like, um, I think if you can find time, and I do have a couple of TV shows I love to watch, but I think if you can find time to read, it's a good time to pick up a new book. And I'm going to tell you about this one that I just got. It's called Live in Wonder, and it's by this fella called Eric Safferston. I don't know if it'll show up there or not there. Anyway, um, Eric is a really unique fella. He's a, a motivational speaker. We're going to have him in our region um, at some point. He lives in Maui on a farm halfway up the road to Hana. I'm really, every time I talk to him, I can, in my brain, I can smell the fragrances of Maui. But it's, it's this, listen, this is not a hard book to read. It's really a collection of quotes and thoughts and questions that he feels like we should be asking ourselves. And I just think it's a good book for today. It's called Live in Wonder, Eric Sapperston. And I, I just, um, I love that this little book because it does make me think, but not necessarily about business, about life and who I am and what I can do as a person. Well, and, and I love that you just said that because the, all of the people that I've invited to share this time with us every day, um, my perception has been for as long as I've known you all, that real estate's just kind of the vehicle um, for you to, to, to be um, the inspirational people you are, to really transform lives. And real estate's just kind of the secondary thing we do. 
Uh, I love that about the culture uh, of this company and the people that it's attracted. And you've always been one of those people for me. Oh, thank you, Ashley. All right, dear. Um, one other little thing I would love to share. It will take me one second because I just saw this on social media. And when I was thinking of making choices, because I think this is a choice any of us can make, it's a little bit of a bigger idea, but I loved it. Uh, and it's a neighborhood flash mob. Some of you may have seen this, but it's a simple idea. And I like simple. I'm not about complicated things. Somebody in the neighborhood has the idea, let's do a neighborhood flash mob. Of course, we're social distancing, so how do you do that? You pick a time, you pick a date, you pick a song, whoever the neighborhood leader is sends that information out to all of the neighborhood and ask each family member or each family to create their own little 30 second segment of a dance to the music that they're sending out and then on the date and the time of the flash mob, the, the neighborhood organizer goes by in their car and videos each neighborhood family, whether they're in their driveway or their front yard, doing their dance, and then they compile all that and send it out to the neighborhood. I love that. I love that idea. How fun. So if any of y'all do that, Please send me your neighborhood flash mob. I'd love to see them. My neighborhood is not one that is conducive to doing that, but I'm, I'm liable to find me a neighborhood that would and just go do it anyway. I, I was thinking the same thing. We live kind of rural, so um, there, there wouldn't be very many mobs. <laughs> All right, uh, does anybody who's on with us have questions that they'd like to ask Ms. Cheryl? or just in general. This is a, a time when we've all been coming together and our agents asked, I was cutting it off once we were done and the agents asked last week, hey, can we have a time to debrief once um, your guest is, yeah, is done? So. Absolutely. Oh, I see G <laughs> hey, Judy, thank you. I love you. We get to talk to Judy this week too. Oh, that's gonna be awesome. Uh, <laughs> Linda. My Linda Lee says, how does she stay so happy? Cheryl is perpetually happy. Um, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know how I stay so happy. I guess I just am. Um, I know that I am blessed beyond any measure of anything I ever I could live. And uh, a lot of that comes from being a part of this company and all these wonderful people, including you, Ashley. Uh, that I've got to know over these past 20 plus years. Um, I'm just a lucky girl and I like to be happy about it. Well, do you ever have, I mean, we've, we've had some business conversations when things weren't okay. rosy and you still were happy in those conversations. So did, um, did ever I, I'm not always happy. I mean, I, I have tough moments and you know, I'm not afraid to express the times when, when those tough moments happen. And yet, I think, uh, again, it's a choice to be happy or to be, I can be frustrated or as Diana taught me to say years ago, fascinated by situations. Uh, and I can let that drive me down or I can be happy and just figure out how to get through whatever that situation is. And that's a choice I make. I'm going to say this is the first time anybody on here is going to hear it. Um, I'm actually write down the date, April 23rd. It's next Thursday. Um, and at one o'clock, we have Mitch Schwartz, who's a bold coach, who's been doing virtual listing presentations for years because as a bold coach, he still has his team in production. Uh, oh, wow. He's going to do a, uh, a class for us on uh, winning virtual listing presentations. Wow, that'll be awesome. And the two days prior to that are actually the most exciting for me um, on, at, on this time and this call, 11 o'clock on the 21st, we have Mo, um, oh. which is just going to be awesome. And it on the 22nd, be. I just got confirmation this morning, we're going to have Diana. So uh, it, will be a, wow. it will be a really good week. Every week's a good week, Ashley. Yes, every day, You're right. every day, we make that choice. It's awesome. And 
you are a special, special lady. And the fact that you have done this and fulfilled people in, in so many special ways by having all these great people on your call. I don't know how I got invited, but I'm honored to be here. But honestly, I just think it's such a great thing you've done. I'm really well, impressed. It, and I appreciate you saying that. And I've shared this with a few people. I, I wish I could say it was completely selfless and, and for our agents. Um, but it hit me last week. I've been so blessed to, to be part of and create relationships with amazing people. And I want to talk to you. So we just started letting other people listen <laughs> and have a benefit of that. This was yep. really for my heart. And um, I'm glad to be able to share it. But it, it was what I needed. So thank you. Well, that's what I needed too. So thank you very much. All right. And let's see, we got... Um, Oh, I don't think we have any other questions. And Judy, yes, you are the 23rd at 11, but the listing class is at one. So Judy, if, if you all can look at your, your pictures there, Judy Johns is, is here. I'm gonna unmute her. Let me see everybody. Unmute her, honey, you can say hi. Hello, everybody. And Cheryl, gosh, it's so wonderful to see you. And Ashley, you look like your hair is growing like mine, isn't it crazy? <laughs> it's nuts. I know. I got a haircut the day before we went on lockdown, knowing it was going to be bad, but mm -hmm. oh my goodness. I'm glad I let it go gray a couple years ago. Oh, yeah. That's been a tough one for me, I tell you. But um, my hair salon, hair looks great. Did it come to my house? hair salon sent us an email, sent each individual client an email, and took our color formula from the salon and translated it into the Clairol formula and told us which Clairol formula we could order from Target. Oh, that was a great touch. I love my hair salon. <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, yeah, that was a good touch. One of the things that I do, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a meme. Is anybody else collecting memes <laughs> during this time? Facebook memes. Let's see if I can find it. It's my, my favorite one so far. I love it. Uh, Ashley, no. back one more time, please. I couldn't read it. I'm sorry. <laughs> what it says is, when your Botox wears off during quarantine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Not that I've ever that's had Botox you, or anything. That's when you bring your bangs all the way down like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. Absolutely. All right, Robert Shantz, my Robert says, Cheryl, being a leader, we sometimes make hard decisions. How do you handle when you make a hard decision knowing that some people will not like it? Oh my gosh. Um, you know, you, you, I think you always evaluate the reason for the decision you're gonna make and you know what is the best decision based on the evidence that you have. I don't, I, I try not to just make a decision from emotions, I try and make business decisions uh, based on evidence. And you make that decision and you communicate your reasoning behind it. And for those that don't like it, you just have to accept that and move on. You know, being a leader, nobody ever said it was going to be easy and making decisions that are good for as many people and the business as possible is just part of being a leader. So um, everybody's not always going to like it. And guess what? Everybody is not always going to like me. And I just have to understand that and move through that. Mm -hmm. You know, brush it off and move on. Uh, and I've watched you over the years take stands, always with a smile. And I think that that helps too. It's the energy oh. sometimes you bring mm -hmm. behind it, even if it's an unpopular decision. Okay. Right. Huh. Yeah. And Brian says being a leader is not a popularity contest. Um, no, it is yeah. not. Yep. All right. What can we do for you? How can we help you, your region, and your people? Oh, you're so sweet to ask that, Ashley. Well, we are in Georgia, Alabama, and Tennessee. 
So if any of you have referrals coming to any of our states, just remember us. If you know agents anywhere in Georgia, Alabama, or Tennessee, let me know and let me connect them with our market center and recruit them on any of your behalf because we are the most profitable region in all of Keller Williams. We gave out, or we shared, I won't say gave out, we shared, I'm trying to think of the exact number, last year, a little over $19 million in profit share, and we would love for some of y'all to benefit from that. So that's what you could do for me. <laughs> Send your folks our way. All right, yeah, yes, uh, Kristen says, I need to find people in my downline in those areas. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, hon, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, we'll let thank you have on. Thank you so much. This Big was a pleasure. Hug. Big hug. See you soon. All right.